California cycle will not be broken until we face the issue of eliminating the large 19th century training schools in favor of smaller, more regional-based facilities. I mean, there's a kid who doesn't talk much at all. I mean, he's, he's very quiet. Been in a number of different foster homes. Uh, he remembers his father taking him and his uh, little dog uh, and when he's four years old and placing the dog under a uh, one of these caps on a pickup truck that's laying on the ground. And his father brings him back a week later and they see the dog dead. And uh, that's his memory of his father. At the time of planning this conference, we didn't know that we'd be sitting here just three weeks after uh, Joseph Maldonado died inside the Chad Youth Prison. In the degree to which we don't solve the crisis inside the California's youth prisons is the degree to which we can predict that this will happen again. Every day, harm is occurring. I've talked to kids who fake mental illness and suicidality to get into the specialized mental health treatment programs that they feel are safer. These kids need action right now. When you put a kid in a state institution in the desert in California for a few years and they have not had contact with their family and then you dump them back in the community. I think the best way is to place your own kid or your own son, daughter, nephew, whatever, in the system and ask, is that what you would do? I came on board because I believed that there was a window of opportunity here in California that we might not see again, um, and I decided that I wanted to be a part of it. By focusing on the deep end kids, by focusing on the secure care facilities, you are doing what government should be doing, and that is addressing the most likely young people to get out and reoffend. Anybody know what the three-year recidivism rate at the CYA is? 74%. What happens to an institution that loses its purpose is exactly what's happened to the CYA. The YA is criminogenic. One thing Governor Schwarzenegger deserves credit for is unlike any of the last four or five governors, at least he acknowledged that there was a problem, and he, to some degree, acknowledged the extent of the problem. Um, yes. There are some bad staff. Tragic incident three weeks ago, um, a, a youth committed suicide. I went out to the facility that night and I met with the staff, looked in the eyes of a correctional officer who spent 40 minutes applying CPR, trying to breathe life into that youth. And looking at his eyes, and it's very clear to me that we have staff who sincerely care. Because we know that young people are not the problem. They have the truth about what is needed. Look, those kids are going to continue to die in there if we don't close that place down. Don't forget the kids that are still in there because I'm not here for me today. I'm, not, I'm here for those kids that are still in there. When I was 12 years old, I was arrested for a robbery and sent to the California Youth Authority Preston at 13. At that time, Preston was housing 18 and over. I graduated from YA, less human. I expected so much out of this CYA system. I expected so much and got nothing, nothing at all. Started back in 1989 when I lost both of my parents and first entered the foster care system. A lot of that stuff had built up inside of me. I was just thinking it needs to be shut down. <laughs> I was one of the youngest persons to be convicted to the youth authority. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. They've locked us up like dogs, treated us as if we're less than human. We have to listen. In San Francisco, I think one good decision we have made is to resist sending kids to the California Youth Authority. It's like that old saying, right, if the milk at the, at the uh, corner store is sour, then don't go there. About 1996, Santa Cruz, like all counties in, in California, found the, the local juvenile hall to be really overcrowded. We have young people were sleeping uh, on the floor with their heads uh, by, the, by the toilet. We began our work um, to try to reduce our reliance on, on detention without um, compromising public safety in any way, and we've been very successful in doing that. Um, today, our average daily population in the juvenile hall is about uh, 16. Our average length of stay is uh, seven days, and we're committed at the deepest level to keeping kids at home and in their communities. But most of the counties, there are 58 of them in California, most counties look at what Judy and them have done to Santa Cruz, and what is the first thing you say? It's the same thing you say when your mother or father or a responsible adult 
congratulate your sibling. Well, we can't do that in Fresno. We can't do that in, you fill in the blank, Riverside. That's just not right. What that is is you are choosing not to do that. Probation officers can no longer just be brokers of service. They really need to be providers of service and engage with both kids and their families. I just am pissed off that the greatest country in the world, that the only way they can figure out to socially control teenagers is to put them in cages. We've got to stop doing two kids and start doing four kids and maybe even doing with kids and families. Give us something. Show us something, something concrete. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So if you want what you've never had before, you've got to do what you've never done before. And so that's what young people and the system uh, must do. Judy said we listen to the community. Um, we don't just form uh, answers while they're talking, <laughs> that we listen. And then we partner with the community to the fact that there's a throwaway uh, youth population that these young people of color are being caged because of uh, doing something wrong. When they, as Kurt said, we all have done something wrong as teenagers. Should the only response be being locked down? Uh, Kurt said, let's not forget or forgive a system with a 70 to 75% failure rate. And let's not lose sight of the reality of that.